Let's burn some metal. <laughs>
uh, and they go up three, four thousand degrees. So we're only heating this up to about 1400, 1450 degrees, so it should be fairly safe. Now I'm using an old useless pan I have uh, that, uh, and I'm using peanut oil to cool this 01 tool steel. Now, a lot of people will use just regular vegetable oil, oil like olive oil. I don't recommend that one from what I've read. It has a fairly low flash point, smoke point of only about 190 degrees. Peanut oil is about 230 degrees. Now, some people will use motor oil. Uh, I'm leery of that one because from what I read, motor oil will catch on fire uh, at about 400 degrees. So not recommended. Now set it down fairly close so that you can uh, quickly get the steel into the oil. Next up, the little propane torch I bought. This is a cheap one, less than 20 bucks. It doesn't have any regulators and stuff, but it's fairly simple. You just simply screw the top on, make sure the valve is turned off first. And uh, I used hand pressure, and hand pressure from one, one of my wrists was broken, so it doesn't take too much. You do notice it does have two little flats on it, so if you want to secure it with a monkey wrench, that's fine. When you're done, you take this little valve off, so it seals up pretty well. Now lighting this is fairly simple. They give you a little sparker. You just turn the gas on. Now I did find out if you turn it too much, I mean it's only about 10 degrees, it won't light. You have to be just a little bit, and then you kind of fiddle with it. Uh, it's not an instantaneous change until you can get a blue flame that's about four in four to six inches. If it's yellow at all, you've messed up and just readjust it. Now, uh, if you remember your science class, the heat, uh, the hottest point of that flame is at the very end of it, not towards the low brass valve. So you want to keep the metal towards the end of that. I just held it with one hand and put the plain blank in a pair of vice grips. Now on top of the fire bricks, you'll notice a little U thing. That is a heavy duty magnet that I've had for decades. Uh, I'm a, we're going to heat this up and I'm going to leave it running in actual time so you can see how long it took. Uh, and we're going to heat it up to about 1400 degrees. At that point, the iron changes phases and I believe it's called austenite. Uh, the crystals in the iron become angular and they lose their magnetism. That's incredibly important for holding making it hard. Now you see it turning black right now. That is not the butane torch. That's actually the carbon coming out of the steel as it goes through different phases. And then the carbon gets burned off a little bit and you'll see it turn a little silver. And what we are looking for is a bright red. At that point we've reached the austenite stage. And from there we're going to quench it as fast as we possibly can because we want to lock those iron and steel atoms in their angular state. Uh, that's as hard, as hard as they'll get. The problem at that state is it is very brittle, and I'll explain that later. So here we go. It's slowly turning red. Notice I was aiming at the middle. I kind of thought I'd heat up the middle first and then bring it out to the edge, but I found out that the heat flowed down the blade, so I heated up on the end more. Now, I probably went a little bit too far, but I'm about to check it on the magnet. Earlier, that magnet was picked up by the flame blank. That's how strong it is. And right here, it doesn't even flinch it. So it's, we're at the right temperature. I stick it back in the flame to reheat it up because it got cooled off. And now I'm going to quickly dunk it. And I'm going to make sure when I dunk it, I keep it perpendicular to the oil. I don't want one side to cool off faster than the other. And you want to keep it moving. You see the little it flame smoked a little bit. By keeping it moving, you keep fresh oil going over it all the time. So there we go. We just heated up the atoms to an angular state, and we locked them in that angular state. Okay, when you're done, just turn the valve off, let it cool off. Now, before you anneal it, I've read that you have to take the carbon off of it. Remember, that was the carbon that escaped out of steel. And if I wipe it off right here, you can see it on the white paper towel. I'm just going to use a thousand grit water stone, and I'll probably spend a little extra time and flatten somewhat of the back towards the, the bevel. It doesn't take long. Now, while I'm doing that, I'll try to explain the best way I think the hardening process worked. Basically, when we heat it up, they went 
to their austenite state, so the atoms became very angular and pointy. Now think of a game of Jenga. You got these square blocks. Now you can move one of those blocks out a little bit and, the, and it won't collapse, but you just go half a millimeter too far, when those squares, their edges lose contact, the whole thing falls. Well, that's kind of why iron, when it's at this hardened state, is extremely hard, but it's also very brittle. Those squ square angular atoms, I mean, they leave contact, and then that's that. It breaks. Now, the annealing process, we soften those edges a little bit. So the easiest way I can explain that one would be if you were had two balls, uh, rubber balls, you can move them around, you can change them out, and there's a gradual contact loss. So they, they're a little bit more durable that way. Uh, we just don't want them to get too, ra too rounded, so we only anneal it a little bit. And so it, it will st still maintain its strength. A ball itself, you know, you can press them down and they will move around a little bit too much. But if you, rounded squares, most durable. You know, here's the biggest difference. You can see, just a little bit knocking it off. Our next step, we go into the kitchen. Now I'm using a little candy thermometer and I suspended the iron blanks in the middle of the oil. I didn't want them resting on bottom because I couldn't really tell the difference. And I just heated the oil up real slowly up to about 350 degrees. And that's the little black mark on the thermometer. I left it at that temperature. Now I will say this, I had a hard time keeping that temperature consistent at 350 degrees it looked, went a little bit up and a little bit down but it was around that area for about an hour and it's a gradual heat up and a gradual cool down that's what softens those angular atoms a little bit I also found out that the oil cleaned the blades blades pretty we're pretty much done now all that's left is sharpening up the blade. Uh, here's my traditional way of sharpening. I use this cheap little jig. I think it was only like 10 bucks. Uh, it has the measurements on the side, so I set the measurements. Now, from what I've read, getting angles dead on at a certain degree isn't that critical as long as you're consistent. This is the most consistent way I know of. Uh, starting with a thousand grit stone, uh, I typically uh, flatten the stones first. Uh, uh, I use a diamond plate, and I've had that same diamond plate for six years now, and it works just great now. I w this is a little squirter I bought from the Home and Card Center. I love it. It's air pressurized. A few slow draws to get the initial uh, beveled, and then just have at it, back and forth. I don't bother flattening the back between... Uh, between grits because the next grit will take the burr off. Just check it every now and then. You go to 4,000, work that for a little while. Then you go to 8,000. These are all Norton water stones, flattening each one ahead of time. When you've done that one, take it out and then work the back a little bit and you will pretty much be done. Fairly sharp blade. Thanks guys for coming along as I learned a new woodworking skill, how to play with fire. If y'all like this, then check back every now and then to see my latest experiment. Y'all be safe and have fun. And please remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others.